There's a feature in FileMaker 13, the ability to label tab controls dynamically, that might have gone unnoticed, but it might just also be able to help you do what you have never been able to do before in your FileMaker database solutions. We've got a tab control right here. Picture and description are the current tab labels. Let's say that we wanted to place the item name from this inventory database table in front of the word picture and likewise in front of the word description. We'll go to layout mode, double click on the tab control tab, take one of the existing tabs and click the specify button. This has never been there in previous versions of FileMaker. Specify takes you to the specify calculation dialog box, meaning any calculation you can dream up you can use to label your tabs. Let's just insert the item name as a reference to the field, then an ampersand, and then we'll go inside the quoted area and insert a space as well. So we get the item name followed by a space and then the word picture. Hit the rename button to confirm the rename and we'll do the same thing with the description tab. Click it, click specify, reference the item field, ampersand, and then we'll just put a space in front of description. And rename, and OK. The labels here in layout mode change to calculation, but when we exit and save, you can see that we get toaster picture, toaster description. And as you flip to another record, shampoo picture, shampoo description. Totally dynamic labels. Now you also notice how I have this category ID field up here from which, from which we can choose a category. Now the categories are coming from a table. Let me just show you that layout. So there are our three categories so far. We could add a fourth, like, um, I don't know, gardening. And then as we come back into our product details layout, gardening is now a choice. So this is a, a table driven or a data driven value list. Let's say that we wanted to use the values from that category table as labels from the, uh, or on the tab control. Okay. In this first example, we'll take a look at how we might just use the label from the current items category. The label from the current items category. Now we already have a relationship from the inventory item to the category. I'll show you that on the relationship graph here. From inventory item to category using category ID here as the foreign key field matching a value in the primary key field over here, category ID. And so we could simply reference the category field where the names of those categories appear and create that as a new tab control. I'll show you that. And so now when, when we're in an item that is in the toiletries category, we see a toiletries tab. When we're in an item that's of the housewares category, the tab label changes to housewares. Now one potential use for that might be something like this. Maybe we want to, on that tab, we want to display a list of all of the other items that are in that same category. In which case we'd need to create a new relationship on the graph. We would need to be able to relate from inventory to another instance of the same inventory table so I'm going to say inventory same category and then create a relationship from category ID to category ID there. That is from the current inventory item, from the current inventory record, find us all of the other inventory items that have the same category ID. Now if we do that we're going to get the same product listed in the portal that we're about to create as is listed on the current record. But I'll show you a neat little trick around that. First, to draw the portal, show records from inventory items of the same category. We'll show the vertical scroll bar and we'll put the category name field, uh, sorry, we'll put the uh, item name field in the portal and that's probably all we need. And there we go. Exit and save. And so now when we're on a housewares category 
item like toaster, we see that the other items are toaster and bread basket. But toaster is already here. It's showing up in the portal because it meets the criteria of the relationship. That is, it, this toaster record has the same category as the current toaster record. So how are we going to get rid of that? Well, there's a neat little relationship trick we can use. Back into the relationships graph. Double click on the relationship line right here. And we'll say to make sure that the relationship is not only based on matching category IDs, but on unmatching item IDs. That is, where the item ID field in the current record does not match the item ID field of the record to appear in the portal. And we'll add that rule as a second predicate, if you will, of the relationship. OK, and OK again. And so now, the current record disappears from the portal, and we only see the other items that are of the same category. As we flip around, now we're in toiletries, and there's only one other soap, or one other uh, toiletry item, soap, and so forth. So that's another example of how you might use dynamically labeled tab labels. Another example would be maybe you just want to see all of the categories from that category table. And uh, I'll go ahead and double click on the tab control. I'm going to hijack this one. Let's say we don't want it anymore. And we're going to go in and specify that we want to display the value from the first record of the category table. Well, there's a function called get nth record. Get nth record. This is a pretty useful little function. It allows you to go across to a record of some number, and it could be you know the first record in the found set, or the second record in the found set, it could be uh, current record plus one, or current record minus three, or something like that, and allows you to grab the value out of a field at that record. Now, if we say category, jump into the category table, and get nth record from the field name category, and we say just grab us the category field out of record number one, and hit OK, and I need to just rename that. OK, and then we'll say OK here, and we'll exit and save, and we end up getting just the same category name as the current record is based on. So perfumes, perfumes, right? But if we go back in and try to add the second record, so we'll come over here and just say, all right, grab instead of the, from the first record, grab from the second record, and we'll create that one. And then likewise, make a reference to the third record and create that one. And we'll say OK, exit and save, and we get question marks. And the reason why is because the relationship that we were looking down from inventory to category was based on category ID only. And so there's only one related category record to the current inventory record. What we should do is go in and create a new relationship that relates all category records to all inventory records. To do that, we're going to create a new table occurrence on the graph, also category. And I'm just going to call this one category all. And we're going to use a special kind of relationship where we look at uh, category to ID to category ID, or really it wouldn't even matter what fields we use in this relationship. You'll see why in a second. And as we double click on the relationship line, we're going to change the operator here to the cross product join. That symbol means make all record make all records on this table related to all records in this table. And we're going to change that relationship definition. So now every record is related to every record. When we point from any inventory record, all category records will be related. Then we'll go in and redefine our calculations here. So instead of using the category table occurrence, we're going to use the category all table occurrence, like that. And rename, and then I'll just do these others by hand, because we know the spelling. It was underscore ALL, rename, 
likewise there, underscore ALL, and rename, and OK. Exit and save. And there we get our housewares, toiletries, perfumes. That is the field values from the first three records of that category table. So there's a couple of uses for dynamic tab labeling, a brand new feature in FileMaker 13. I hope it proves useful to you.